guys, we are here with the beautiful, the amazing, the unique, one of a kind. <laughs> Well, it's so weird that we're doing a second take on yeah. this. <laughs> this is the first take. This is the first take. <laughs> this is the very first take, guys. We didn't do a, f uh, a take before this. So, Ruan, how do you feel being here for the first time? No, good. It's it's like I said before. It's nice to get an invite. The infamous Iceps and this podcast, <laughs> you know. So, it's good to meet everyone and. On a Sunday night, what a what a way to end your weekend, eh? I think it's an amazing way to end the weekend. How do you feel about the rugby that happened this weekend? <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm not too surprised with some results. I know I sort of I, I kind of expected the Bulls to maybe win this time, but um, I actually all the it. other teams, all the other teams, no surprise. But I thought I I, I was taking in numbers. I th I think it's a numbers game. <laughs> so if the Stormers have won the last six games. Surely the Bulls are due to win one soon. Yeah. Do, you know? Do you understand? I just felt the Bulls came in with such good structure. I know they played versus like Leinster's like C, B mm. team, but they came in with such a good structure, the Bulls. I thought they had it against the, sh mm. against the Stormers this time. Yeah, I think, yes, they, they were firing. I think there was a bit of stuff going on in the camp there after the bit of a dive they took in the season, but... Yes, they, they played with a grudge those last two games of the season. That's why I was thinking, yes, it would be a lot closer. What was the score? I, I think, think it was 31... 33-21 or yeah, something. Yeah, 33-21. So it was, a, it was quite close for yeah. a quarterfinal. Yeah, it was close. I think... Um, the Bulls just gave it early lead away almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they gave like a very early lead away. 10 points in the first 10 minutes or something. Yeah, and the f yeah so... But that's like a Blue Bulls thing. Like, I, I haven't watched rugby in, a, in quite a long time. I think the last game I actually watched was when I... At, at Ellis Park with... Yeah, uh, we when watched JP JP's played. game. Yeah, that was the last us. rugby game I watched. Um, but I, I, I used to be... I, well, I can say I'm a Blue Bulls supporter. I can possibly say that. But the thing is, the Blue Bulls play rugby like... They usually trail in the first half. Yeah. In the second half, they play catch-up rugby. It's almost like it's like a scripted event that they try to make it as exciting as possible for the, for the supporters. Mm. But you guys, so you and your brother are both playing props mm. for, for the line. So for you guys that don't know, he plays number three, if I don't have it wrong, mm. and JP plays loose head. So you've guys always been in like a, a competition almost with each other. And, and me and McLaren were speaking beforehand. How does it feel like comparing you to like one against one another? How does it feel? Do you challenge each other? Is it like a competition? Is there a healthy uh, rivalry? Yes, that's the word. I think you'd be, I think you'd be pretty surprised. Um, since we were there's never been too much of a competition. We've never been jealous or envied each other. There's times where he was, he excelled at something and I excelled at something during school or whether after, after school, but we never, we always brought the best out of each other, but we always, we, we never, we never, it, we're envy of each other. Or so it was never like a, no, he's not, got something that I no, don't have. No, never. never like not that. a lot of people assume that. But because we were so close, like we were inseparable, like basically, until we obviously got married and, and he's got his life now, we've got to drift away, but which is natural. But, but you're yeah. still very close. Yeah, we're still very close. I mean, you guys run a TikTok account together. They prank yeah. people together yeah. and, and they dance with other rugby players. Yeah, it's yeah. the coolest <laughs> thing ever. It was JP that posted that yeah, video, yeah, yeah. eh? I presume I'm you were the one dancing. No, no it was JP. <laughs> really? Yeah. It was JP. Oh, so that was shot was like before, before his, his knee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, fair that enough. was on two A. Some of the a lot of the videos we post are stuff that we've kept that um that just add up and you go through your camera roll and you find something funny. And it's like something I want to mm. post. But a lot of the videos happen on tour because you got a lot of time. You're in the room with each other the whole time. Yeah. You sort of get you sort of have a lot of time just to do Yeah. There's a there's a lot of stuff to to have fun with mm, with the exactly, people. You yeah. have to you have to use your time wisely. Yeah. So so I've got a personal question for for you now. What's something on tour if you can go back in time? Mm. What's something on tour that you would change? What you have done or an opportunity that you have missed? Something that you would go back in time and change? Yes, I think that's a good question. I think on tour when you're younger and you go your first tours and stuff, you sort of take it for granted. And now when I'm a bit older and the tours are becoming less and less and less, you sort of look back on, on these times where you could have done something with a team or where you choose to stay in where most of the boys decide, let's go out for a beer or, you, or something like that. Like yeah. just one. There's a lot of times I can't put my finger on something specific, but um, there's, there's a lot of missed opportunities, so, so, so to say, to make So memories. you just say you'd go more out and, and spend time yeah, with Yeah, spend time because I, I, I'm sort of a kind of a homebody. Yeah. I like my own. Like, to, I, I'm, be to be honest, I'm pretty lazy. 
This one, yeah. If I'm not training, he's the one that's skinny. He's skinny, and I'm the fat one, and he's saying he's lazy. I'm far from, but it's the secrets just wear big shirts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing double XL suits yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that the fashion stage is gone where you have to wear tight shirts. Eh? Yes, yes, that fashion those stage. <laughs> those those V necks yes, that bro. drop lower than your boobs. Yeah? Yes, I remember back in Stellenbosch when I was just as long ago now, 2009, when, when I just finished school. Um, yes, that was the in thing. I always had with tight shirts, and it like, started yes. back then, I presume. Yeah, but then you'd always go. I'd always obviously I got a big, so I'd stretch it out a bit in the bar thing. Yeah, but like it, and it must be tight on the arm. People like always took yes. it like this. They rolled it in. Yeah, it eyes. Cut off the blood circulation. Yeah, 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 blood yeah, yeah. circulation. <laughs> but it's have you noticed it's so weird of kids of today? Like then it was the tight shirts, baggy pants. Now it's those jeans that don't give you any circulation the to your skinny blood. Jeans. Yeah, those skinny jeans, and then your freaking shirts are loose and all of that. Kids are so weird with the changing you must, styles. You must speak to Jipes. He, he's a big fan of the skinny jeans. Really? really? Yeah, you must see him. I've got a few. <laughs> he does. Wait, he, he wait. Looks all right there, but. We're gonna give. A, you're gonna send me that picture. We're gonna put it up here for the Off for the guys. <laughs> guys, if we see this picture, Cameron, the editor. So if we speak about Cameron, he's our editor. So okay. he edits things in for us. So Cameron, put the picture of JP right here. Right here, that picture of JP in a skinny jean. If we get it, if we get it, you I'll guys will it. see it. <laughs> so you've got a question that you wanted to ask Ruan about about. Um, his his career and and a game you wanted to play with him, so let's get to that, Mr. A Spree. game that I want to play with him. Yeah, the, the the game about the rugby team. So oh, you don't have to think too much. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I'll, I'll go. I'll, let's okay. play. Let's play. So obviously in the URC, there's a bunch of different teams and everything. Only 15 people can be on the field mm. at one time. Everybody in their different positions. Do you have an, an a URC 15 team like? 15 base players you would put in every position. Yes, I do. I do. But on the cuff, do I have to think of it? Make it easier for you. World 15 of all time. Okay. That's going to make it a bit okay. easier for you. Okay. World 15 of all time. It's going to make it a bit easier. Can I just say, I think I prepared for this last night. <laughs> I don't know why. Me and my brother just decided uh, that that's just the way the world works for some reason. I don't know. Like I found out today we're doing a podcast mm. with you. We uh, also player. found out today that we're doing a podcast <laughs> with him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Zaisev was the only one who yeah, knew about this. No preparation. He was thinking about this for the entire week and he's just like, you know what? I'm going to do it today. You, know you guys I, fall in. I, fall actually, in or fall I out. actually thought about it just before church. Really? Just before this church, morning. I decided, let's ask Rowan, let's ask Splin. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah, me and my brother actually, we, we stayed up until like two o'clock, half past two in the morning watching mm. rugby clips. So, I think I'm sort of prepared for this. Okay. Okay, let's start. Your loose head of all time, your number one, who would it be? There's only one, Osterant. Okay, Hooker? Hooker would be Sean Fitzpatrick, probably. Sean Fitzpatrick, that's a good one. Okay, tight head prop. Yes, there's a lot. Eh? Currently, tight furlongs probably up there the best in the world but i'd go my one i looked up to when i was young carl Heyman. i don't know wait who did he play for all blacks he said okay well yeah that's why i don't know him i think it's just before our time yeah carl Heyman. i would have i would have thought you maybe would have said like the the franks brothers no franks is up there but i think carl Heyman was in his era he was he sort of brought a new dynamic he was this big long tall prop and he was just crushed he brought like you guys are tall yeah and he, he played in france and stuff now and when he finished about 10 years ago he's finished but. so your 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 lock bear yes. i thought you're gonna jump into like the buckies and uh no victor. no no i am but i'm trying to think now i'm trying to because it's easy to say buckies victor but there's a lot of i, I would go victor number five victor okay, was so victor for a leader i presume to yeah, be the captain but, of the but team. just the way he ran the line outs and he's he's rugby savvy he was yeah he was very smart i was smart lucky when to play against to him as well that's how old i am Really? Um, yeah. Yes. Um, number four. Yes, I can't go. I, I just, I think in our generation, it's hard to go past Ibane. Eh? You, you would, would you put Ibane above Bucky's? In your th- honest opinion. Of can I tell prime. you why? Can I tell you why? The, the game has changed so much now that Ibane brings us similar to physicality as Bucky's, but he has got another aspect of his game, the ball carrying. The, yes. But it's hard between those. In modern game, yes, Ibane, because it he's just he's, brings everything. Yeah, that is. But and I, I think in the modern game, the refs are more strict on on certain things 
of of how they see it and they TMO everything. And mm. I think Bucky would have he would have never gotten got a lot more sanctions. Yes, penalties, yeah. red cards, all of that against him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your flankers, flankers number six for me, George Smith. Okay, George Smith. Seven McCaw, no question. Richie McCaw, your eighth man. Come on, this is an important one. Yes, I don't know if I can get past Kieran Reid, eh? Kieran Reid. Okay, he actually said it back in the day when we had a, a conversation. He said Kieran Reid as well. What do you? How do you feel about um, Hooper and Pocock? The 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 no, it was Hooper and it was Pocock. Yeah. The Australian the, flank. The Australian yeah. flankers. How do you feel them as a pair back in the day? Were I think I, I played with with um, with Hoops and David. I played with Pocock for about three years. If he he was. He was the best over the ball everyone's ever anyone can argue with. Jackler, the best pull for the ball stealer. But then he got those two ACLs, which sort of hurt him a bit. Never after he came back strong, but he's definitely up there. He's definitely up there. But I read something and I was like, "That's it's very important." They said like Hooper and Pocock were so good, they just needed an eighth man to compliment them back there yeah. because they didn't really have an eighth man to compliment that. I think the only reason I'll go on McCoy is on his accolades. His World Cups. And yes. The amount of games he played without being injured. But who do you put as captain between McCaw and Victor? No, McCaw. Okay. So this is the fun part. Your backline, you're not going to have time. So this is going to be the first one you think of. So you got a time to put okay. up a sick, Can a I sick just front say, line. He put out a pretty unique like front back, the, the front eight. Like You had some combinations going. Instead yeah. of who's the best for this position yeah, specifically, yeah. you kind of had a position thing going. Yeah, yeah. if you think McCaw and, or combinations. Reed, McCaw and Ken Reed together is... is, is That's amazing. Yeah. I, I don't mean, think you can beat that. And then George Smith in his heyday. I mean, George Smith... If you go, just go back and watch his highlights and do... Some of them were a little bit before our time. Yeah. So if we go look at some of their clips, I think we can understand what they were doing. But the names you have named that I know was insane. So you've got your set forward lineup now. Mm. So this is going to be the speed round. Okay, let's go. Okay, so when I'm going to ask a number, you're going to say a name, the first thing that pops into your head. I know you're trying to think already, yeah? Okay, okay so number nine. US. Ten. Dan Carter. Eleven. John Loma. Twelve. Uh, three. Ma Nonu. Thirteen. Brian Driscoll. Fourteen. Uh, two. Adi Savia. I mean Julian Savia. Julian Savia. Okay, fifteen. Yes, hard. Percy Montgomery. <laughs> he, he's got a decent team. I'm not gonna well, lie. He's got a decent team. For the little team. amount of time he had there, he packed a sick backline there. <laughs> no, I was struggling with um, twelve because Ma Nonu obviously is there, but. I can't really think of any. But wouldn't you put Conrad Smith as like his 13 rather than... What did he say? He said, oh, Drusko! Yeah, yeah, no, 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 yeah, no. Bro, if there's one 13 you can possibly put there, and I mean no disrespect no. to anybody else, I think it would possibly be um, Donny Gerber. Yeah, yeah, Donny Gerber, obviously. Yeah. Yes. So I didn't even think of... I think Donny Gerber and a Drusko... But what about Ben Smith then as fullback? Yeah, see, I didn't think Ben Smith... No, I know, I know. But I'm thinking now of... Percy was good. But Lee Halfpenny, what do you think about yeah, that guy? With the big Lee Halfpenny yeah. pulled different. Fullbacks. Who else is fullback? That guy looked like he juiced since he was like two. There's yeah. one guy I saw last night. He played... I think he even played in the 95 World Cup. Uh, I actually watched a video with like top 10 fullbacks and stuff. Uh, I think it was Andre Hubert who played Bale, for the box. Yeah. He was in there. Did you guys know he actually broke his hand in the, the, final. the quarter finals? Yeah, he played throughout the whole. He played the semis and the finals. I thought he was wearing a glove. A it's broken like hand. padding. Mm -hmm. Bro. Yes, he was that, also good, eh? Yeah, he was very good. But there's a guy from the All Blacks. Christian Cullen. Cullen. Yes. yes. Well. <laughs> I watched it. I was like, <laughs> this guy, of course this guy's good because nobody's tackling. Then I watched the footage in a slower speed and a second Bravo. and a third time. That guy was breaking tackles. He was in he sure. was busy falling to the ground, both his feet next to each other. He somehow spun out of the tackle. I, re I remember you must go back. He played for the Hurricanes, Christian Cullen. In it was a but 2000, early 2000s to late 2000s, 2003, around that area was his prime. That guy was. You, you know how sad I was, JP? I had Achruan. <laughs> See, now we spoke of JP. That's the first one. I didn't that's break one, it. I didn't break it. I said Ruan. So that was my you. fault. That's one on me. <laughs> Remember, I've been longer friends of JP. I met Ruan through JP later yeah. on. Yeah, fair but enough. But okay, so Ruan, if 
you can talk about the biggest heat that you've ever given someone, like the biggest bump and the biggest bump you've ever taken or biggest tackle, who would it be? Yes, the one that stands out, I, when I made my Super Rugby debut in 2012, I came on the field with about 10 minutes to go against the Blues. And I remember, I remember it vividly. I remember it was about on the halfway line and the Blues had the ball. And I just came on and I was, I was sort of on the inside man and I saw, and the switch came and the inside the switch came and it was my nonu. Yours. And, and the first tackle ever I've made, I didn't, I made, it was a half tackle. I almost scrapped my pants, but I sort of carried and I slid down to his bootlaces and luckily someone helped me. That's the one I remember. Um, so but, it was a stressful one for my nonu to be the first person to run <laughs> on you. <laughs> yeah, my nonu was the prince. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of people i would i would think let's of pick tackling. on the newbie <laughs> let's pick on the new i actually heard that um okay but let's first go on to who's the guy? how hardest you bumped someone who was that yes well, i don't know um when i was it's probably at school eh? <laughs> that's the last time i bumped someone <laughs> when, when they split the brothers yeah. against each other <laughs> You know, it's the worst feeling ever if you get bumped. It's the worst feeling ever. <laughs> we were playing against Maritzburg College. So so Maritzburg was like, I think Patrick Lambie comes from there. So this one guy, strong lighty. Yes. He takes a break, a flanker. He takes a break off of the, the rock. And, and I drop. <laughs> but I don't know which side to put my head because he's jumping like this, dude. Oh. I put my head in the wrong side. I gone. Poof. The worst feeling was not my neck. The it worst feeling was the getting, crowd going. Oh, <laughs> your manhood. That was that was. It was Great so things. horrible. I've 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 been bumped. I think in Matric I've been bumped once. Well, I was bumped once in Matric by a. There was we played against this team. They had a lock. The lock weighed about 120 kgs. He's like over two meters tall. So we have our pillars and everything mm. set up. And the hookers, they also a pretty big guy. He's not that tall, but he's a pretty big Stuck guy. Here. He weighed about 105, 110 kgs along those lines. So this the lock picks up and he breaks. And we're busy shifting. So we've got the pillar there. This guy decides to run next to the um next to our hooker, bump, bounce off the hooker and and fall into me. But as I'm shifting, he falls into me. So I'm in a position where you I can't physically take, yeah. can't make a tackle. I was almost sitting. <laughs> And the guy just fell on me like that, poof, and, and I just, I, I literally bounced off the ground. Just gravity. The just, coach afterwards, everybody just laughed. They made so many jokes um, about that moment. Have you guys been like in a situation where you trolled in school? Yeah. I don't know how to say it, where like you would go write a test for him. Have you ever done that before? At school all the time. At school it happened all the time. So we would, they always, you know, back in the day when you go to first day of, of school, you yes. always get told your class or I don't know when exactly but you know so yeah, yeah. so they always made sure we're not in the same classes we don't we took exactly the same subjects okay so all the same things all the same things but not the same classes so they made sure I was in grade 12b or whatever and then but if I for instance had geography and he had PE and I'd say yes John I'm not feeling geography lately today or today can we swap they say, okay, cool. I got you next time. Then he's got one in the bag for me. Oh, so yeah. then you guys got to swap. So then he'd go to geography and I'd go to PE. A credit system almost. Yeah. Like and it's then, your then it's, turn. Yeah, next time. But the, couldn't the teachers figure out? No, no, no. no. They, they wouldn't. Because you don't... Sp people people only sort of s start noticing the difference if you, if you spend a lot of time with us. Yeah. But if, if, if you see us... 30 minutes every third, second day. When when I started, but now that you're older, it's a bit easier to see the the, yeah. the facial differences. With with JP's partner, she she explained to me um, the faces. The faces, the broad face, the, yeah, the yeah. smaller, like the sharper face and the sides. And I was like, okay, this makes sense. But the first time I saw you guys, it was so hard. It was so hard for me. I had to check you guys out first. And, and after a while, it only gets used to. But I yeah. think it's now that you guys are older, I wouldn't think it would be possible for me if it was your younger stage yeah if you see but if you see this few baby photos of us we were like to toddlers i don't even know which one is we which really so you yeah, still you, get confused if you had to ask me to put my house on which one is which i wouldn't i would take a guess it'd be 50 50. but you guys are identical twins yeah. Yeah, yeah yes okay that's that's rough but you've guys always been big or was it only like a later spree into your life that no, you guys we, got the size we were we were always the bigger guys in, in our grade jp sort of i was always sort of about 15 kilograms heavier than him since since going through school and then just after matric 
he sort of caught up with me. So I think I was the early bloomer. Really? So, yeah. so, so you were heavier in the start. And, yeah. and length-wise, the same length's or same. not really? Length's about the same. Length people about the same, yeah. Jeez. So, so I've got a, I've got, an, I know I've got a lot of questions today, but I want to hear it from a pro, uh, a pro rugby player. What do you, how do you feel about like supplements and and stuff that people use for the younger kids? So, if you can speak to the audience now, the kids, mm. what would you tell them in in the sense of people that want to go pro, kids that want to go professional in rugby mm. and all of that? What do you tell them is the important things to look at? I think supplements. Everyone's got a big misconception about supplements supplements is something it's literally what it says with supplement if you can't have if you can if you can get proper food you can eat proper food you don't need supplements but supplements is just those top-ups if you need a bit of protein and stuff but i think people get caught up in it too much i i understand why i used to when i was a lot younger you always used to get your supplement stack and before the season starts and stuff and I, there is benefits to it but it's not gonna nothing's gonna beat food no nothing's gonna beat food a proper nutrition, yeah. a proper and meal. You know what's sad? All of these influence and stuff that try to promote like this testosterone pills, fat burners, all of these things through the children that have no knowledge, but they look up to these guys mm. and then they want to start using it. And it actually decreases their health benefits Massively. at the end of the day. And But the bad thing about that is they promote these pills mm. obviously because they endorsed by the company, but... Well, no one knows what they really use. Do no, they? did they actually use it? Yeah, but they might use it. But what else do they use? Yeah, that's the thing. To, that's to just go with it to yeah. look like it. So like I guarantee fitness. you, a lot of those guys, the protein powder or the stuff he promotes is not <laughs> making him look like he looks there. Yeah, no, that's absolutely. the thing. Like that's we spoke thing. about it. Like Instagram influencers, like many of the big gym guys, use steroids, and then they tell the kids from mm. school, "Okay, use this protein shake, use the supplements that I'm using, yeah. and you will look like me." And this kid does everything and then he feels like a failure yeah, yeah. until a guy at the gym comes to him, oh, you want an injection, Bobby Cox? Yeah. And then, poof, he starts with an addiction. There's one guy that I know that I respect personally for the way he addresses everything because he's open and honest about mm. it. Noel Daisel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, South yeah. African. Yeah. Yeah. I've watched, I, I sort of live on gym and, I, I, and I've watched a lot of the bodybuilding stuff and... I think it's easy. You must just go on YouTube because YouTube is pretty straightforward. Yeah, YouTube YouTube's is not going to lie to you. If you type in a product, you'll get mixed reviews or you get 10 honest reviews and two mixed, like, yes. but there's a lot of fake stuff out there. A lot of people just looking after their own bags. and. Yes, but my, my, I wasn't with you the same. My TikTok was filled of prime review, prime review, yes. prime so review, prime, prime review. Prime South Africa. Yeah, but only for the first day. No, bro. I saw. It. I, I I didn't see it. In, I don't. I haven't seen it today. But like the entire week, I've been filled. My for you page have been filled with everything prime. It's like they idolize the I've product. I've never seen anything like it. Really? Like I have. No, I know the product. Yeah, yeah. But I saw a video clip. The I think it was today, yesterday. But as soon as checkers doors opened, are they rushed in? I've I've never seen anything like it. You know what's sad, actually? Like, like I why? saw a video of these kids bringing camping chairs and everything to checkers. Like this one year close to us, um, the kid, the people waiting these seven o'clock already outside in lines. They rushed nine o'clock. I woke up, went there, chilled. We just walked in, no line. Picked a few prams, picked it down. Happy days. I tasted it. But have you noticed how many people drink it wrong? No, it's a lack thing of is, it's it's not like a cool drink. First of all, people think it's a cool drink. It's a hydration yeah, drink. Yeah. So it's like how I can explain. It, it's almost like a rehydrate. Yeah, Almost, like our neighbor is in, is, uh, in the medical direction. He says it, Prime is literally just like a rehydral. I think it's rehydral that you call Rhea, it. Rehydrate. It's like yeah. those packs. Yeah, yeah, just such as, yeah. throw them in, in water and shake them. And I believe Prime even looks the same. It looks like a colored water, like yeah. a gray colored water yeah, or something. And the thing is it has coconut water. It's got your BCAs. It's got your potassium. It's got your vitamin Bs and As. Um, so it's got all the necessary things and a lot of sodium as well. So your sodium and potassium, that's like the yeah. main things that's in a rehydrate. So many kids were like drinking it as cool drink and, and some of them were struggling with like um, vomiting and Stomach diarrhea bugs. and stuff like that because it's not for like too it's much cool drink. It's supposed to do, uh, take when you re replenish, when yes. you need it. And it's such a good rehydration drink if you look at the, the, the stuff that it contains, but people have a misconception of what it is. It's not your Coke Zero you drink once Yes, and people yeah. are really throwing it a vodka. Have you what? seen this? 
people are really mixing the the prime with vodka. South Africans, I presume. That's South Africans. Yeah, no, that's dude. any South African. Next, it's gonna be Buffalo's Fontaine and Prime, <laughs> something like that. A brandy. They're gonna mix in a brandy. Yes, but it shows you I, the, the the marketing genius of those guys. Yeah, they Logan Paul. We spoke about it. I've seen comments, people making jokes. They say like Logan Paul can literally sell ice to an Eskimo. Bro. It's crazy. I, I couldn't believe how crazy people are carrying on about it. But there are so many. There are so many influencers that they basically. I, I don't want to say sellout. Sellout's going to be such a bad word. But, but it's like out. they they yeah, get they on this out. bandwagon because Prime people Prime just took over and now everybody just jumped on the bandwagon. Let's use Prime for views. It's going to be good to yeah, use for but views. it's for the views, so it's a sellout. Yeah, it is. But have you um, noticed the strategy that they use? No. Why so many people bought Prime? So think about this. I'm going to explain to both of you. They let a few bottles get imported because the importers are very unknown, if you can put it this way. So, so think of a marketing perspective. You import a few bottles to South Africa, sell them at 400 rand, 500, 400, 600 rand. 500 percent what they yes. sell them for so now. So 600 rand, whatever. So it was very limited pickings. Yeah. Now that they're 40 rand... Imagine the marketing team from Prime. Now let's sell a few like at 400, 500 rand, whatever. And then, so it's extremely expensive. So when the release is of 40 rand, that's already it's expensive for it's a bottle. It's a luxury so product. It grabs 10, it's 20, cheap yeah. now, for example, for the people. Yeah, they yeah. think it's cheap. That's They've what brainwashed I mean. you, basically. Look at that marketing genius. My sister showed me a picture of a guy that goes to school with her. Or, or she saw it on, on social media. The guy sent it to the to one of the social media, the meme pages or something, an Afrikaans meme page. The guy bought 132 bottles of Prime. That's over 5,000 rand. One shot. Why? I, I honestly, I can't think why he would do something like that. To spend, to spend 5,000 rand, that's probably, that's like a month's groceries. Maybe for it a was like a thought five. of reselling. But Maybe he was scared that it's all going to get sold out and that he has <laughs> stock to sell again. Did you see what checkers looks like? Yeah, there's too the much. Check, they, they stack, they've got the entire, a, a, a separate section just for Prime. Oh, it's, it's crazy. It, I, I it's like, rough. You know what it reminds me of? Have you have you've seen those movies where there's like those Christmas movies and it's like a Black Black Friday mm, in Black America? Friday, yeah. <laughs> it's literally like that, but it, it but was. in the middle of freaking what? Like the start of April, sales and Black Friday sales. Is, but you haven't tried it, yet? No. Go give it a try. Go give it is a it try. Nice? It's mixed for everybody. Like one that's nice for me is like bad for someone else. It's a very peculiar taste. I've seen it on Checker 660 when I ordered the other day, but it said stock out of stock. No, there's really? a lot of. Like, I think it's maybe because the guys are too busy. I can imagine how busy Checker those guys were. Checker not in the mood now. Those guys yeah. for like two days, everybody was just driving. <laughs> have you seen ten hours a day on that <laughs> bike? Two bottles of prime. <laughs> so, so Ruan, if you can be a pro in any other sport than rugby, mm. what would it be? If you don't say golf, I'm going to be super sad though. I was just about to say. I, yeah, ju I just, I just watched. Hey. I just finished watching um, Full Swing on on Netflix. Have you seen it? What is that about? It's Full a Swing. It's about documentary about the golf and the PGA Tour, and then they take each episode. They'll they take the lives of two golfers leading up to the. So is it like is it like Drive to Survive exactly, or Formula exactly. One? But just about. Yeah, just <gasps> I've it's got a new series. Yeah, it's going to spend my time. It's called Full Swing. It's very good. They, I think the first one's Justin Thomas and um, what's his Jordan? Not Jordan Smith, his friend, his best friend on the tour. I can't uh, remember. Justin Wolf. Ach, uh, what's his name? Wolf. Uh, J T. J T. Just, Justin Thomas and. His, and wait, what's Wolf's name? I've got his, his best friend that they also play. Dustin on the Johnson. Dustin Johnson. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. So then they go two of them and they up to the PGA tour and they show how they travel and just it's good. It's good we should actually look at that. But we, bu I'm busy planning a YouTube video, guys. If you want to see it though. Comment down below. So, I want to do this video. It's like, I don't know if you've seen good, good golf before. Like those youngsters, mm -hmm. good, good. So, what they do, they take sometimes like, okay, they've got a one club challenge. So, they have to play with one club this whole oh. hole. Or it's all ball sports. So, they start with like a soccer ball. Then it's a rugby ball. Then it's like a pool cue. Okay. Or, for example, you have to swap and play with whatever the wheel says, wheel unfortunate and whatever. So, I want to do like a golf day like that. So, it's me, you, JP and...
Spleenless. Spleenless. Can sorry. just just bleep it out Can every time. Just, just say bleep spleenless. it out. <laughs> <laughs> my my head is not working, but. That would be such a good YouTube yes, video. Yes, it would be fun. I, I think it would be. We can get but it like needs four to be parts. like an entire day. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, you just play like four holes like that. So the this, whole video is long enough if you do four holes, and then we can play the rest normal again. Yeah. It just makes such a fun video. It's a good idea. I, th I think we should do it there. It's a good it idea. Is, it's going to be a super sick video. Do you play golf? I love golf. Is you, are you good? Are you going to be one of those guys that say, I'm not good, but you're good? Hmm. Maybe he might be if I he might keeps be. his cool. If I keep my cool, I might be. But I'm one like, of those guys. Sorry, you continue, continue. I've, I've practiced my short game a lot, so I listen to what Tiger said. So and focus on my putting and my short game a lot. I, I have some work on my long game, but the thing is, if I lose my my routine and my rhythm, then it can go into a bad day of golf. <laughs> you can't get it back. No, it. I can't get it back. But the thing is, if I'm in my own head, yes, it takes a while to get it back. <laughs> I think I'm the guy that shows up and I, I try to act as confident as possible for the first shot. And the first shot usually it's it's it, he misses the whole ball. It's, it ruins it's day. terrible. And then it's just like now the mood is set, now we can play for the day. And everything is just bad. Everything and I usually yeah, yeah, hit yeah. one good shot and then I'm like, now it's gone. It's finally the luck is turning. <laughs> and then yeah, it's then just it done. Back again. <laughs> and also like nine nine holes in, maybe nine holes in, then my hands are done. My hands are done. The grip is in he, my hands. Yeah, but he, Everything he like is swings this grip like you. I don't know what he does. But he's trying to bend this thing. <laughs> Ruan, you know what's one thing? I've, I've got this bad thing I do. But I use some of my friends that are not the best golfers. <laughs> so if we go play golf on a golf course, I let them tee off first. Because you know that first tee box stress? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I let them tee off first. So if they blunder the ball <laughs> in front, the then, I feel, then I'm done, boy. Then I'm ready. <laughs> that's what I always do. So that's why we're friends. Yeah. <laughs> that's why he invited yeah, I never me to planned you for anything. He, he that's saw why he one video. Golf trips. <laughs> exactly. He saw one video and he's like, this guy's bad at golf. <laughs> <laughs> I need him as a partner. <laughs> <laughs> so between you, and, between you and JP, who's the best? JP is good, eh? He used to play. We used to, when we, um, when we lived in Canberra in Australia, when we playing there we used to play probably for about ongoing about six to eight months once twice a week What's just on? make like it's well, not happening once twice a week <laughs> just take it off <laughs> <laughs> oh once twice a week yeah you but say. then and then you, you see you can see the thing about golf for me is it's a thing you've got to play regularly to, to, yeah. to see improvement and you can't play once every three months and expect you're going to be better and then it gets frustrating because but when we used to play fair, but we got but JP JP could play. I think his handicap was about up to eight or nine. Yeah, that's stage. about what mine was before COVID, eight handicap. So you I think play. according to my handicap stats now, it's still like on the index at eight now, eight flat. Um, but good, huh? after COVID, I didn't play too much. So I'm only starting now again. So what I do is normally I would go to like a course like services, Dinster. Mm. I would go there. I would get like a, a caddy that I know his name is Vincent. Quite a nice guy. Yes. So I'd go with him. And even if I mess up a ball, I put another one down. I practice my shot. Oh, yeah. I practice what I want to do. Because I go for card and I'm alone. So I can just go fast. So there's no people that's going to catch me from behind. Yeah. So if I'm on a bunker, I know exactly how I want to open my stance, put my legs balanced, lean more on the front foot, get so underneath So basically it. practice on the course. So, so I practice on the course. So I go alone sometimes. I'll get a one friend. So you two guys, so you're still fast. Yeah, yeah. So we don't hold anyone back. But we still practice and get get whatever practice i need in mm. see i play golf at such a level i literally need to let people pass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like please take your time i know i'm gonna waste at least five to ten like, maybe even 15 to 20 minutes on this hole so it's a part three i know i know it's a part three don't worry about that just play yeah, and you already you already look who's the next you can come pa let pass yeah, if there are two holes behind me maybe we can yeah. we can try to fit in no, another hole but if there's one hole behind us it's, it's like no i don't like being chased pass us yeah. i've got a question for both of you if you can choose one pro golfer mm. right now Tiger to give to give you golf lessons yeah for two hours straight who would it be tiger woods i can i can on personality i think i don't know i think some of those big dogs would be pretty be like a job for them tony fee now oh that would be good but he's giving me such a rugby vibe like oh he's a yes, and then you must see on that show i just spoke about you must see what a nice guy he is eh? what if he's a, such a family man humble just genuinely nice but then they get clips of Rory McIlroy and you can see it can be difficult. Yeah, yeah. I think, I don't know if you, 
was it Rory McIlroy? Rory McIlroy is the best at this stage in the world, eh? Uh, no, I think it is Scottish John Schiffer. Rom. No, John okay. Rom. Is okay, no, well, it, he was at one stage. He was like the best yeah, for, yeah, for yeah. a time. So there are these uh, YouTubers. One guy's in America and one guy's in the UK, and they actually they came together to. It's this thing that they set up where they they basically try to be the worst possible people. <laughs> like who's who's got the biggest, you know. Yeah. who's not afraid to do anything they actually got locked up like twice during that segment during the video so the guy went to or they both went to the course with the remote control golf ball oh you talking about nico olamana and yes, uh, uh, Gideon. Gideon. and yes. they they played with the remote control ball have you seen ball. that clip have you seen that no. clip of the remote control ball for rory McIlroy and he picked it up and threw it away he got no. so mad he what literally he, he freaked so, out he picked up the remote control ball so what so was this is a ball? challenge so this is two youtubers they challenged it other to see who can be the biggest menace that was the series no, that was name. The series name who sorry. can be the biggest menace so they would let them do different things and days and challenges and everything so Jedion's day to Nico was you're going to get a remote control ball that you're going to control on your phone. So at the PGA Tour, he threw the ball down and he wanted to get the whole, the ball in the cup of Rory McIlroy when he was playing. So he got like the shirts of the people, everything. So the he got ID like cards, the marshals, the ID cards. They, they went back to back days to, just to sort everything out to the make clothes, it look yeah. as authentic as possible to get yes. next to the green. Yes, yeah, so they put the ball down. Go, went in, got arrested. Same thing with Gideon. He got a challenge where he had to put up a picture in the Louvre, where that's where the Mona Lisa and all of that is. So to pick up, put up a fake fo uh, painting up in the Louvre and act like he painted it. He did it. He got locked up there in France by by police and roller skates, and they got locked up by the Rory McIlroy game from the Americans. Gideon so almost got locked up at the one cricket match. He ran onto the cricket field when one of the guys got, uh, got a wicket. When one of them walked off, he ran onto the field. He's got the kid, the you bat. Should, you everything. would love that series, actually. You should go Are they search. Americans? Uh, uh, one guy's American, the other guy's from the UK. From the UK, yeah. You you would love that series. The biggest menace from Nick. Is it on YouTube? Yes, I'll send you the link. Yeah, I'll send you the link. Too. You will freaking love it the way they've played it out and, and everything. So my thing is I would actually pick John Rom as my as my I golf don't know coach. Who that is. John Rom. He's yeah. the one that won the Masters now, I think. He just mm. won it. But he's my, doing something. Can I just say my golf knowledge? goes as far as the golf games like i know tony finau is good because i lost against him on the pga tour a couple of times <laughs> <laughs> but I, I presume in real life he's good out of the bunker yeah. is he good yeah, when he, he plays, plays out of the bunker such... bro in the game he hits it's a it's a par five <laughs> he plays knowledge. to the bunker just to get an eagle out of the bunker <laughs> he can easily get it on the green he plays into the bunker just to get an eagle out of the bunker that's okay. Tony Finau that's what I know about Tony <laughs> Finau it looks so weird Tony plays with such short sticks yeah. almost but he's tall guy eh? he's very tall yeah but have you noticed they did a they did a thing for golf now where they tested all the handicappers from 30 to 18 18 to this and this and this all the handicappers so they shortened the driver by a, sh a few a few centimeters they shortened the driver mm. all of the yardage has increased except the guy that was handicapped from 0 to 5 his yardage decreased from 1.7 yards but all of the um average uh meters like not the meters but they i don't know how to put it they they wide variety how far they would hit it out from the center line yeah so they, they oh, would the be angle. more centered so yeah. they all would get more centered on if, all if, of them if they shorten it if they shorten the driver john ron plays with a shortened driver all of them it makes it more accurate yeah it makes you think because yes when i used to play i, I struggle with the driver because it's always i draw it and then i i, I fade it or I, I, then i try and fix it and overdraw it you should actually ask them one day if you go to a golfer's club, ask them, can you shorten my driver just a little bit? Can I test the shorter shaft and and see how it feels? Makes sense because it takes you closer to an iron. Because the irons are closer less, to an iron. I'm more yes. forgiving. So it's eh? the same shot. And the thing is, then you don't different. focus because the driver is so long. We focus on coming around the body where it's actually that you have to play yeah, yeah, yeah. up on the ball where we don't do that anymore. We play around it because the, the, the driver is too long. Okay. It's it's Hopefully a very weird it. concept. It's I've, a very weird. It makes concept. sense though. I've seen that they uh, tested a or they, it's a prototype driver or something. I, I don't know if it's Titleist or yeah. I don't know if you guys have seen this. It's like a prototype driver or or something. It's like a new driver. I don't know if it's launched or if it's available to the public, but they um I don't also I don't know if it's Titleist or what it is. But it's the the driver is made to be the most forgivable driver. So they tested um. 
Tiger Woods, uh, I think Rory McIlroy was there. They they had a bunch of these like pro golfers. If it's Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy, it's TaylorMade. I think it might be it might be the TaylorMade stuff too. Mm. I think it might be. So they tested it. They painted the golf ball so that it would leave a mark on the on the driver's head. And they told them, you know, you need to hook this. You need to slice it. You need to fade it. Yeah. Whatever. You need to hit it off center. It shouldn't be in the center of the driver. Okay. And the ball would still go straight. And they would top it. They would hit it. If this is the, the, the driver, they would hit it at the top of the driver. Not in the center. They would no, literally hit it at the top there or at the back here. The ball went straight. But that's like a cheat code. Is, is, are that, no, are, is but, that uh, legal? But remember, no, but I they it takes, it, takes, it, takes it away from competition. No, but they well. wouldn't use it. Remember, because many of the courses requires a slight draw around something, requires a little bit of a fade on your mm. driver. They wouldn't use it. If they've got a thing like that and they know they can only eat straight, many of them won't use it. My like, question is how many people that actually, oh, well, golf, never mind. Golf is a rich man's sport. So the rich people who just play casually will probably pay like 100 no, grand I, for the driver. I, I, I get it. Like, say you, you, you're, you're not a pro golfer, but you, you're a competitive golfer. Yeah, they'll use it. And you play competitions and, and you use that thing. It obviously is going to advantage you, doesn't it? Uh, it will. Actually, yeah, to, for the prize monies and yeah. stuff like that. It will. I won my first golf tournament. Really? I won my first golf tournament in Alberta and we played like a golf day there. It was like a golf day thing for something. So so it's not a tournament, but a golf day, if I can put it that way. And I freaking won. What did you win? <sighs> Meat raffle. <laughs> Bolto. Oh, I'm negative about this. Because the guy that came in like third place got like a, a drill. <laughs> I got a cast iron casserole pot. Do you know how expensive those things are? I know, but it's like, what am I going to do with this now? Salad. Like, I can use a drill now. I can use a grinder now. A salad. Salad, salad on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. It was a drill yeah. and a... Yeah. It was a Le Le Mans. A Le Le Mans That's like a French port. one. Yes. You know how expensive they are? I, I, I'm not I joking. Heard. Have you looked? I heard. The guy said it's like 3,500 yeah. bucks yeah, like or something. Up to 5,000 rand a pot. Yeah, are, they, are they those colorful ones? Yes, the yeah, colorful yeah, could, ones. Those things are expensive. Does right? it add flavor to the food? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you can't cook, but you still have it's that It's just pot. a yuppie. It's just Does a it statement. Up the protein yeah. flavor. <laughs> so I think um, I want to end this this day off with a with a sentimental question. If if you can go back in time and give yourself a advice mm. when when you were younger, what would it be? What advice? If you stand in front of <sighs> Ruan from many years back. What advice would you give yourself? Yes, I think it's simple. Like the lifestyle that I had probably when I was not from 19 to 22. I think my career could have been a lot different. I think I, I, I think I was, to be honest, to be quite honestly, I think one day I will look back and always wonder if I actually committed my whole life to to what I do, where would I've what would I've could have achieved and stuff. That in hindsight you always say that, but a majority of my professional rugby career I didn't live like probably like a professional athlete. Stunned. Like yeah. for, for me, rugby was at a certain stage it was everything. And then I just sort of phased out of it. Phased out of it and just it wasn't that important to me the majority of my career. It was just a job basically. So I think if I could change that and just give it a bit bit better go. I think things could have been. That would be your advice to your younger self: work harder to. to yeah, and and um, all feel distractions when you're young. Yeah, that is that's a big thing, because I've got this there. internal. Oh, I shouldn't say this on a on a podcast because it's somewhere gonna bite me in the bum. But I don't like Franz Malherba as a prop. I don't. He yeah. feels like it's like me, but with a bigger stomach, and I don't, he doesn't know what he's doing, <laughs> and and I think. If, this might get cut. I'm just saying, Cam. If no, <laughs> I I've seen you play. I've seen a few other props play. I think there is better than France Malarba. I don't know why he's there, but that's my honest opinion. Okay, I I, tell you, I know France fairly well. I've played with him growing from 2008 throughout when I was. The thing with France, people don't see the stuff he does. When you watch a game, if you go watch a, a, a test match. Watch every every breakdown. Sit down and watch him. Take don't take your eyes off him. Just watch him, and see how many tackles he makes. His scrums are obviously, but with his body, because he doesn't look like a your natural big athlete, boy. 
but he gets through a lot of work. Yeah, it doesn't look like the modern age props, flat stomach, yeah. balls like, like a you, truck. You, you look at it him. It doesn't look like you're them. You, you yeah, look, you, you're modern, the modern props. <laughs> you look at him and Kitsi, like Kitsi used to always be, when they played together, Kitsi used to be the ball carrier, the, the one that does the stuff around. He yes. does his, everything well, but he used to do the flashy stuff as well. France, and they complement each other very well because France yeah. does the, the hard, hard work. Real, you, you just watch him and you'll see what, what, how much work he gets through. Can so, I ask if, sorry. No, no, no. So you you would say he's good at what he does? I think he's unbelievable. I think then it's maybe the the point of view that we judge maybe before we actually know what he exactly does. And and I can be wrong on that point. Franzi, luister my eister. I love you, Boyki. If if you are better than than what I thought, and I'll go check the things. Yeah, so eister. If I'm not, sorry, name. Just feel free via email. Okay, so. Um, yes, you wanted to yeah, ask. Yourself. I have one one last question. Um, out of your throughout your rugby career, what is the most memorable moment that you've got? Do you have? Yeah, I've something? got I've got two, two that. Um, <clears throat> sorry. So in 2013, when Jake was our coach at the Brumbies, we beat the British and Irish Lions. Um, I think Wait, was, the Brumbies beat the British and Irish Lions. Yes, on a Tuesday night. Sure. It was, I think it was the first time in 72 years where club side beat the British and Irish Lions. Sure. So we won that night. That was special. I remember um, getting the original British and Irish Lions jersey with the embroidered stuff at the bottom, which I still have. And the other one was 2008 when I was lucky to play for the Barbarians against the All Blacks on, in Twickenham. Yes. And there was, I think, 72,000 people. Yo. And uh, that day was just... I, I wonder how much people would auction right now for that British and Irish Lions jersey. Yeah, and it's a beautiful jersey. It's, it says it's not Barbarians, British, All Blacks, Twickenham, date. And what the I'm, British and Irish Lions jersey, what did that say? It says the date, British and Irish Lions was Brumbies and the player, Matt Stevens. Yes, yeah, so you scored big time with those shirts. Because yeah, so they, those, those two were probably... I think that's like the most acquired shirts that you can get. Like the mm. British and Irish Lions. I had a shirt and I'm so sad that I sold it because I was a kid and I needed golf clubs. So I had a framed Highlanders jersey from 2010 when they took the Super Rack. When they won it. But it was all of them. All of them. The whole squad signed the whole shirt from number one. Where did all you get that? It was at an auction at our school's like a fundraiser thingy. So mm. my dad got it back then for like a thousand rand because no one beat on it because I don't think many people knew they won that year mm. but Wait, it was the 2010 the Highlanders 2010. won I think McDonald played for them Israel Dag played for them back then if I don't have it wrong yeah, yeah. when did the Super uh, when did the Super 14 end the Super 14 ended 2009 wasn't I it I think so something 2010 like Super Rugby started w didn't the Bulls dominate the end of the Super 14 and the start no, but the of the Highlanders Super won Rugby. the 2010 That's, I, I did the research on the shirt okay yeah. I might be wrong then. I think I might be thinking of 2011, maybe, when the Bulls and the Stormers that, played in the final. That strong era where they won it like mm. three times. The, the Bulls performed. They literally, they won, They even won the Curry Cup. Mm. So, Mr. Ron, if you can nominate one person to come to the podcast, who would it be? If you can nominate one person. Anyone. If you can nominate a person from celebrity, whoever that like, you want to call out to be on the podcast, who would it be? Yes, uh, if you don't see Willem Albert stressed as Leon yes. Schuster in that rugby match straight with the nose taped up everything, yeah, but what would Willem, it be? you guys would have a good laugh with him, eh? He looks like a funny guy. On yes, he's a, he's, a, he's a legend. Is he a genuine oak? Yeah, no, he's as genuine as you get. Yes, I looked up to that guy a lot. So, but who would you nominate to be on the podcast? Yes, that's a tough one, eh? Um, South African or anyone? No, it's South Africans. It has to be South maybe, Africans. Maybe later we can get anyone, but now... If we have South sponsors Africans. to fly people... <laughs> yeah, we've got <laughs> sponsors to fly someone in now. <laughs> or if they, they really want to be on the Zyceps podcast. <laughs> yes, I don't know. Hey, um, yes, I can't think, I can't think now. JP. Someone, JP. I, yeah, get JP maybe. on, but I'm trying to think of something... Like an cooler. actor yeah. or a musician. Yeah, no, but I don't know. To get, get JPs on. JPs will give you more. Oh, we, we need to get Jabe shot, but we need to get him like with a bed or something, like a stretch here. No, now. he can actually walk now. Can he this, walk now? This week, he's, I think he's coming into training on Tuesday. So he can drive. Already? Him. Yeah, I think, I think so. I'm not sure. I, I spoke to him last week. He said he may, might be coming in this week, but he was supposed to be laying down for two weeks. Yes. 
But Ron, I want to say thank you for the amazing podcast. Thank you, You're guys. such a legend. Thank, thank you, you for thank coming you, on such late notice. No, you are an amazing person. And I want to see many more years for, for you and for you and JP being successful. Thanks. Who man. knows? Maybe you get that Springbok opportunity. I know many people will say uh, it might be scroll, it might not be. Yeah. But I believe you guys got that potential. I, I believe in you guys. Um, Thanks, man. I want to see the brothers just go on once as the bomb squad. At least. At least once as the bomb squad there. Yeah, well, we've got another year. I've got another year left at the Lions. Um, Jape's just on to you, so hopefully we get some t- games together. Yeah, I, th- I think it will be. I think you guys have a lot of potential to, to still go far. E- even if you guys think you're old, there's still a lot left in you guys. If Richie McCall could have done it, you guys can do it. Yeah, no, the prop is going long now, eh? Yeah, the top is goes long. Yeah, yeah. And and may it go amazing with you and your family as well, Thanks, my brother. Man. Be blessed. Thank you, guys. Enjoy. Guys, thank you for watching episode six of the Zicep Show. Enjoy, guys. Be safe. What's <laughs> good? So, um, I guess I'm not going to TikTok. I'm going to see a video from you.